a three match. Early on, struggling to get his ball to the pocket on this shorter pattern. He's made a ball change for his first ball, something that he hopes will enable him to go much straighter. Yeah, his ball speeds up as well, up uh, almost a mile an hour, 21 miles an hour. And again, for people who may just be joining us, these competitors were limited to six balls at the beginning of the week, so it's not as if they have an endless supply of balls to keep trying. It's an interesting strategy. You have to be very careful. And uh, you know, I talked to a lot of the players, and they were a little indecisive. They brought eight, nine balls with them. They, they really weren't sure what six to pick. And that's what we're talking about. Good old-fashioned keggled carry. <laughs> That's what they call it. And l let me stress it, uh, the installation here is perfectly legal by USBC. Complies to all the rules. Just that everything is as pristine as you can get it. And apparently, Domino's is an international game. <laughs> <laughs> Very observant, Randy. Thank you. Much better shot. Notice how he gave that a little bit of angle. A little bit of room to the left, allowing for that back-end reaction. That's what he has to do on this shorter pattern. But keep in mind, a little bit too much room, the ball is going to hang down the lane, and he's going to leave some nasty stuff. So there's a fine line. And you would think on the shorter pattern that he could just uh, you know, miss to the left as much as he can. But because it is sport compliant, you have to make shots. Yep. So the 10 pin still standing for Stuart Williams. Not one of his best pitches. I think the other thing to note, guys, is that you're going from one pattern to the next. You're talking about not only changing your angle, where you're standing and where you're looking with your feet, where you're standing on your approach, where your target is, but now all of a sudden you're changing ball speeds and you're, you're being asked to do this in a matter of one game. Let's throw it to Mark Jackson, who's with a guest. Well, one of the things about a world-class competition is you have to have a world-class venue. Kegel yeah, and I think this is a great lesson to be learned. You watch the pros in the U.S. on television. Some of them stand there forever. It's like watching paint dry. These guys do all the decision-making back here. They step up on the approach. They look where they're putting their feet. They look at their target, exhale, and go. Left of target. Wow. Stewart not unhappy with the result given how far left of target that ball was. Yeah, that was a good two boards left, but more importantly, his, his angle through the front part of the lane was down quite a bit. He was well over five, six degrees before, and that was under five. So in layman's terms, Johnny pulled it. Okay, thank you. I always, on, I'm trying to get a job here, you know. I always have to go into the post meeting and have all these things explained <laughs> to me. So. Dell, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Well, thank next, you, Randy. Next time you get technical, you could leave a, some breadcrumbs behind so I can <laughs> find my way back home. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Back to the action. Peter Young. Well, he's trailing by a lot. 42 to be exact. <laughs> Just cut it to 32 with a hit there and keeps himself in this match, or this game, rather. Best two out of three games wins the match. He won the first game, but it was close there. 236, 233, and right now trails by 32. Looking for some help from this guy, Stuart Williamson. No help coming. Wow. For Williams, so we move ever closer towards the third game. What well, took out the nine? Is that the head pin? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it's must strike situation for Peter. If he strikes out, he'll shoot 226. Stuart Williams can go spare strike in the 10th and shoot 228. Anything less, we're going to game three. Back. Well, he's figured it out, but is it too late? 